Am I the a-hole for blowing up at my biological father's wedding due to his refusal to buy me a plane ticket? Long story short, I'm 19, he's 39. For whatever reason, he hasn't been in my life until I was about 16. I reached out to his family. My mother claims he's a deadbeat, my biological father claims my mother kept him away from me. Both my mother and his ex-wife describe him as a selfish, manipulative narcissist. Knowing my mother isn't capable of something like that, I don't really believe him, but I'm always willing to give him a fair shot. I'm not completely unreasonable like that. So to make a long story short, his wedding was last year. I was invited and was looking forward to the chance to fly over and bond with my family until he refused to pay for a plane ticket. His reasoning was he was concerned that if he had paid for the plane ticket, my mother would do something to intentionally prevent me from going. Ten days before the wedding, I completely blew up on Facebook about it. I completely blasted his family on Facebook because I was going to be excluded from the wedding because of his refusal to purchase a plane ticket. His defense was he approached me last year about paying for half the ticket. This was completely untrue, and this was the first time I had met him. He told me to get myself a credit card if I wanted a plane ticket to his wedding. Nobody stepped up to the plate, and I was not at the wedding. Later on, he changed his story about why he refused to pay for the plane ticket, which was that he couldn't afford it because his paychecks were getting garnished to pay for the 25k child support that he hadn't paid us, along with other expenses between his other three children and his wife. We ended up not talking for a while over it. He believes I am in the wrong because I blew up at his family and refused to explain and justify exactly what I said, and I believe he's in the wrong because of how he treated me over a plane ticket. And edit, the rest of the family all had their plane tickets paid for by the family. I was the only child who they refused to pay for. They aren't broke. Now I know I've talked a lot in the past about you're not entitled to this, you're not entitled to that. OP is entitled to that $25,000 of child support that he hasn't been paid. And while OP isn't entitled to this plane ticket to the wedding, everyone else got a plane ticket. Why is that not a problem for everyone else, but suddenly for OP, they're the one that shouldn't get the plane ticket to the wedding? Much like favoring one child in a family is wrong, choosing to fund everyone else but OP is wrong in this situation. I don't believe that OP should have completely blown up on Facebook about it and blasted them. But I don't blame them for doing that. It's a bad look, but I don't blame you for doing it. But at the same time, that doesn't make it right. I don't believe in getting justice through completely dragging someone over a Facebook post. He even lied to your face about approaching you to pay half of the ticket, which you shut down as being completely untrue. Then he tells you to get a credit card to pay for the plane ticket. Screw him. At this point, I would just refuse to go to the wedding. It's more trouble than it's worth. Potentially everyone sucks here for the Facebook post on OP's side, but I'm going not the a-hole for this one because this guy makes me angry. Now in the comments, no jellyfish 1208 says, everyone sucks here. You didn't have to post on Facebook about it. It would have been enough to simply not go and to cut ties with him or seriously limit the contact. It does not seem that he cares that much about you anyway, OP. He's an a-hole for trying to make everyone but him look like a bad guy. And OP replies, Yeah, I could have done better there. I was insanely hurt, which is why I did that. Part of the reason I was so upset was how I was treated in the past. When I first met him, he went out of his way to avoid me and told me to get over myself when I complained about that behavior. Plus, I was even more hurt because I wasn't able to see my sisters. He has this attitude that his family is his family, not mine. I do believe he was the a-hole because of his justifications for refusing to pay for the ticket. Ah, well, I do believe we have discovered why he won't buy you a ticket. He doesn't want you at his wedding mingling with his family. He doesn't want you marring the narrative that he's told everyone. Considering his claims about offering partial ticket payments and child support payments, I'm guessing he's told a lot of lies about his relationship with you and isn't keen to have you disprove those by showing up. I think your mum and his other ex might be right about his narcissistic behaviours. Ding ding ding, we have a winner. Did I mention that when I met him, my mother was there? 
He intentionally kept my mother away from other family members for this reason. Not the a-hole. I'm just surprised that you're still talking to him at all, honestly. Honestly, I did cut contact with him. I had planned to for longer. However, he reached out and I told him how I felt. He hasn't really been acting like a dick, so I'll consider it a work in progress for now. Narcissistic parents need you. You are the audience who should be grateful to know them. Nice when you pull away, reeling you back in, only to turn on you again when things don't go their way. Be cautious. I did 28 years of pulling back and then going back because I'd believed that they had changed. I hope for the best for you, but always say to prepare for the worst. Not the a-hole. You are 19. If your dad wants you at his wedding, he can pay for your ticket. Not the a-hole. Narcissists are good at provoking you until you go nuts, only to point out to everyone else how nuts you are. This is a great comment. Perfectly describes narcissistic behavior. Most of the times you don't even have to go nuts. You can react perfectly calm and reasonable, and they'd still paint you as the crazy person. Not the a-hole. Your mom told you one thing, and this stranger told you another complete conspiracy. He lied. Now you know your mother was right, and he will always act like a deadbeat. You can have a relationship with him now or not, but in any case, being obsessed with a ticket changes nothing, because even if he apologized, you shouldn't trust him again. And Cooler Man says, I'm a bit confused here. You were 19. What entitles you to money for the plane ticket? Like, I could understand not being able to afford it and him bad-mouthing you to relatives regarding not attending. So you posting publicly to explain the actual situation, but not this. Sure, I think the least he could have done after not being a parent is to pay for the plane ticket, but at the same time, you just come off as an entitled brat here. You're the a-hole in this very narrow situation, even though I have no doubt he's an a-hole in life. I'm 99% sure that you're actually holding on to a lot of resentment and hurt that he wasn't there for you your whole life. And you're realizing that he was to blame for a lot of that, and it came out in this Facebook tirade. If that's the case, then get yourself some therapy. Don't let these feelings turn you into a toxic person, because to me, this just seems toxic. And OP replies, your last paragraph is completely spot on. And that guy replies to OP, this hits home for me a bit as my partner has gone through something similar and found that after the initial joy of reconnection, realizing how crappy they were as a parent comes to the forefront and gives you a lot of feelings to work through. You were not owed your child support. Child support should have been paid to your mother and has nothing to do with you. You're not owed child support, nor a plane ticket, no matter how much of a dick your dad has been in the past. Either have a relationship with him or don't, but don't have a relationship because you think you're owed anything. You're an adult. Adults pay for their own transport. You're the a-hole. Blowing up on Facebook is wildly tacky, immature, and paints you as an entitled brat who expects other people to pay for things. You weren't excluded from anything. You couldn't afford to go. That's unfortunate, but how is it your father's fault? You are not a minor. He's not obligated to pay for your ticket. It would have been nice had he offered, but as you later found out, he couldn't afford to. Being able to pay for certain things doesn't make someone a bad person. And OP replies, You're right, and it doesn't. What I did was incredibly ugly. It was really bad. However... He changed his story as to why he wouldn't pay for the ticket. His original reasoning was that my mother would intentionally keep him away if he paid for the full ticket. He could afford it, but didn't want to pay. They have really nice things, like a nice cars, nice homes, etc. Money wasn't an issue on their end. Afterwards, he changed his story and told me he couldn't afford it, Part of the reason including that his wages were being garnished to pay for the 25k in child support that he owes us. The rest of the family, their tickets, were paid for by the rest of the family. I was the only one left out. And Calding Water replies to that, And? He's changing his story, yes. He's a deadbeat and isn't going to admit to being a deadbeat. 
It looks like all you're going to get from digging into this argument with him is more arguments, more shifting stories from him, more roadblocks to being involved with his family. Putting him on blast publicly may be what he deserved, even if an a-hole move, but is letting yourself get jerked around by this guy what you deserve? Don't get so attached to winning your points that you keep playing a game that's a waste of your time and energy. Anyway, our next post is by user Anoni2024, titled, Would I be the a-hole for saying no to my fiancé wanting to invite his ex-girlfriend to our wedding? My boyfriend David, 32 male, and I, 28 female, have been engaged for a bit, and have finally sat down to make our wedding guest list. He wants to invite his ex-girlfriend Anna, 30 female. For context, Anna and him dated for a few months about a year before he met me. While it was brief, she was apparently super into him. She had had a crush on him since high school, but never got the chance to be together. After college, they ended up working at the same company. They were together for a few months before David broke it off. She was very upset by this and tried to win him back several times until he finally put his foot down by telling her they were done. She backed off, but they've remained friends since then. I'll be honest, I don't like that they're friends, but he's an adult and can make his own decisions. I'm not going to tell him who he can and can't be friends with. I can count on one hand the amount of times that I've met this woman over the course of our three-year relationship. I have no reason to dislike her personally, but I have no desire to be friends with someone who my fiancé was sleeping with. It makes me uncomfortable, feel awkward, and I'd rather not hang out with her, let alone have her at our wedding. I told David I wasn't thrilled about inviting her, and he said that I was being immature. That we're all adults and Anna is a good friend to him, and it would hurt her feelings not to be invited. I see his perspective, but I just don't think that it's appropriate to have an ex at your wedding. We discussed it, and in the end, he said if I really didn't want her there, he wouldn't invite her. I keep going back and forth on what to do. So Reddit, would I be the a-hole for saying no? Look, I haven't been married before, I'm just gonna say that now. And I couldn't justify my reasoning for the head of Baphomet shower curtain situation. This is a really tough inroads for me because we need to make decisions together as a couple. And I feel like it's socially acceptable and has been normalized that, you know, if it's an ex and you're uncomfortable with that relationship, you need to respect your partner's wishes that they not be present at the wedding. This is their wedding too, and no matter if she goes or doesn't go, someone's going to feel uncomfortable. I feel like this is kind of a no one wins here situation. But if I were in the husband's shoes, personally, I would want my wife to feel more comfortable at our wedding than me feeling let down that I couldn't have my ex come to the wedding, even though we're good friends. So for me to relate that to the head of Baphomet situation, absolutely, we should be making decisions together and completely understanding what the other person has to say, why they are saying this and why they're feeling this way. I'm not one to promote unilateral decisions, but I think a reasonable end game here is that the X just doesn't come. Yes, it is the easier option, and I feel like it's the lesser of two evils, so I'm gonna go with not the a-hole. Now in the comments, BeneficialAd1435 says, Not the a-hole. We're all adults. Really? Then why would you be so childish about trying to bring an ex-girlfriend to your wedding? Your wedding's about you and your new family, not about a good friend who probably secretly never got over you. I wouldn't even want my ex-girlfriend at my wedding. I know that it would make my wife uncomfortable, for obvious reasons, and that would make me uncomfortable. Not the a-hole. OP, maybe spell it out for him? Fiance, you may be over her, and clearly since you broke up with her, then it's over for you, but she loved you since high school and was devastated when you broke it off. She begged multiple times for you to take her back. Women don't just get over men that they crush on for so long. They hang around being a friend and hoping for more. That if she is around long enough, then you will see that she is really good enough for you and love will blossom again. I feel like this is what is happening with her. I am not saying you can't see her if she is an important friend to you, but as your wife-to-be... I'm telling you that I'm not comfortable having her there on our wedding day. 
This isn't someone who mutually decided that your relationship had run its course, and having her watch us get married, dragging up emotions for her, and making me uncomfortable will not make our wedding day enjoyable. I am asking respectfully that you please not invite her on this occasion. If he digs in his heels, then please think about why he's doing this. Why is he placing this friend above his bride? What does he get from it? Adoration? Attention? Emotional cheating? Take your pick. Even if this friend is over him, her behavior prior to and after their relationship says she really loved him, and my feeling is that she's hanging on hoping that he will see her as the one. You've been generous not asking him to choose before, but it's totally reasonable to not have her at your wedding. Not the a-hole. The list of invited guests must be something that is mutually agreed upon. Because I really care if your Aunt Edna, who I've never met, is there, but I appreciate that she's important to you. Exactly. I would never have a relationship with anyone who insisted on staying friendly with an ex. Red flag. I would never have a relationship with someone whose exes want nothing to do with them. Red flag. Oh boy. I'm swaying between no a-holes here and you're the a-hole. I've been the ex-girlfriend in that situation. In one case, we were friends first, dated for 18 months, split up and didn't speak, then renewed our friendship. I attended his wedding, became friends with his wife, and helped her and their children when he died of cancer. We are still in regular contact nearly 20 years after his death. As his wife put it, if you were going to be together, you would have stayed together, so there's nothing to be jealous of. We were friends. We were not good as a couple, but we were bloody good friends. I think I've attended the weddings of three exes all in all. Just because you don't work as a couple doesn't mean that there aren't other positives that you can bring to each other's lives. If everyone behaves like an adult, there doesn't need to be any issues. You're the a-hole. Everyone on here saying not the a-hole is treating this as your day. It isn't your day, it is his day as well. If that is a close friend, suck it up, buttercup, and be glad that he picked you. You mentioned the ex had a crush since high school. So does that imply they've been friends for a long time and only dated casually for a couple of months before your fiancé called it off? If that's the case, I do not see a problem, and you're the a-hole. I would say OP is an a-hole if the breakup between them was mutual, but it sounds like the ex fought tooth and nail to try to get back together until she was put in her place. I would find it very hard to believe there were zero feelings left from the ex since she was against the breakup, so I can empathize with how OP wouldn't be comfortable with having her at their wedding. OP said she doesn't care if her fiancé remains friends with her, but she shouldn't have to feel uncomfortable at her own wedding day for the sake of her fiancé having his ex there to support him. And Fondant Safe 4850 says, no a-holes here. He has every right to continue to be friends with this person and want her there. You also have the right to not want her at your wedding. Their relationship was so brief though, and so long ago that I personally think that you're being a little unfair, but that doesn't make you an a-hole. Maybe she could just come to the reception as a compromise? Alright guys, that's the end of the video. Friendly reminder that I'm now posting daily on my second channel, Marky2. If you want to laugh at memes with me, link is down in the description below. On phone, you just click that little arrow underneath the video. I also want to say thank you to all my channel members and Patreon subscribers. Your names are currently floating down the screen here, and I love to see all of you guys. Thank you for joining me on this journey. Thank you for supporting me. I really appreciate it. If you see yourself on screen, I want you to give yourself a big pat on the back for being amazing as always, and thank you for supporting me again. I do hope that you guys have a good day, night, sleep, whatever it is you're up to. Um, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.